Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the rationalinvestor.co's uh, soon to be.com. <laughs> As you can see, we are still building out the site, and a lot of people are using the resources on the new site. And it's cool how we have uh, video stuff rocking and rolling, and lots of feedback from our users and all our. Actually, I was reviewing uh, school classes material just uh, this morning, so super excited about. Um, how the site is uh, slowly coming along. So as I said just a moment ago, uh, welcome to the rationalinvestor.co, soon to be .com <laughs> um, show here. Uh, this is our weekend edition, uh, our broiler chickens. And here's the lounge I just posted in. People are all excited that we're going to do a broiler chicken show this morning. So that's cool to see. Uh, this is, uh, and actually I've tweeted this out and YouTubed it out and stuff. I don't know whether YouTube's work, the feed's working very well these days. Uh, but um, uh, this is also a public show, so I should probably go and, um, let's see if I can find the link to it. <laughs> I think this is it. I should probably load this and keep this chat open out of the corner of my eyes. Uh, if you are part of the public, um, we're actually planning on doing, yeah, I see there's a few people over there. So hi, hi YouTubers. I'll uh, type in a hello. Um, we're uh, actually going to do a little bit more public uh, shows. Uh, one of our co-hosts of our regular uh, daily show, uh, I'll just call him DeBear. <laughs> He's just been absolutely kicking it of late. Um, just And uh, actually, I took a little bit of a, um, a trip. Um, oh, and I'll post that uh, YouTube link in the lounge. If you guys want to hop over to the YouTube page, that's totally cool. So there it is. Uh, rocking and rolling there on YouTube. Um, but uh, the bear has been doing such an incredible job. We kind of want to release him a little bit and just show you some of the awesome work that our TRI members. And this part about TRI is that you know, you hear me uh, rambling away, but really this site is way more than about just Brian. Um, hey, Chaba. Nice to see you, Chaba. Uh, I hope you got back. I heard that you missed your bus. <laughs> uh, so I guess you got back to work in one piece. <laughs> uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to you since, uh, since uh, the trip. But anyway, uh, I was away uh, on a trip uh, visiting some of our site members. Um, and, uh, and the bear, uh, managed the daily briefs and, oh man, he just such an incredible job. Um, and so we kind of want to release that a little bit to the public too. So we are going to try and plan out on having a few more public shows for you guys. But, uh, uh, I thought I'd take the opportunity as I usually do on Sundays. Um, it's more of just an impromptu Brian rambling kind of just, uh, I thought I'd, you know, do it for the YouTube uh, audience as well. You know, obviously, um, it's a bit of a tough slog in crypto these days. Uh, I'm not, there's, you know, can't, not going to sugarcoat it. It's just the way it is. Um, and, you know, maybe an injection of PMA might help you a little bit. Um, you know, maybe a look at the bigger picture. Why, um, ironically enough, I'd actually consider if you're, if you're new to this space, you're basically being given probably over the next year or two, you know, just an absolutely fabulous buying window uh, into this space. But we'll see what happens. Only time will tell. Um, if you are uh, in it, you know, have you been working with me even since last winter? In fact, one of the guys in the Hangout this morning, and I love making reference to it, he and I were pouring over charts in February of 2017, and nobody was interested in crypto. And it was dead quiet, and he and I were just pouring over charts, just looking for Ws, looking for Ws, looking for Ws. Um, and I love making reference to the story because it is it is what sort of what makes a, a good trader is you know when people are not interested, that's when they're really focused. Uh, and later on in the show today, I might make reference to uh, even ideas that I see popping up at the moment. You know, there. We're, you know, if in trading the words, you know, I'll type it in the YouTube lounge just so it's here. Uh, um, so if you do watch this uh, this show later on YouTube, it'll be in the chat as the chat sort of scrolls through. But really, uh, and everybody on the site, of course. Um,
All right, there's the line that I just typed on the YouTube page. There's really no wrong way to read that. And so the question ultimately isn't so much, uh, you know, is the capitalist system going away? <laughs> Hardly. Yeah, uh, the West just won the Cold War. They didn't lose the Cold War. They won it. <laughs> so capitalism is here to stay. And if anything, this image should be sort of almost the ultimate um, uh, expression of capitalism winning, right? This is the open and the free market. Now, the problem with capitalism is, you know, it's a lot of it's based on human emotion. And, you know, the, um, the market is designed to take away as much money from as many people as much of the time as possible. That's, that's what the market is designed to do. So it saddens me, uh, and it was awfully difficult to go through it. But, you know, the first part of 2017, I had spent a lot of time just asking people to slow down. Um, and now, you know, based the better part of 2018 was just sort of like, uh, okay, you know, if you did by, you know, heading into the top there and, um, that you were new, then this is going to be, you know, uh, um, a good lesson for you at the very least. Um, and if anything, it, it should be a really good sort of learning example, you know, and, and. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be too preachy here. I'm just going to simply say that, uh, you know, cap uh, the system is alive and well, in my opinion. And um, actually, I'm not even quite sure what I'm sharing on YouTube. Is uh, is the current picture the uh, Bitcoin picture? Or are we still on the uh, title page? Somebody over on YouTube could just tell me. I'd appreciate it. Everybody in the lounge here is, um, is uh what do you guys see can somebody tell me are you seeing the bitcoin chart <laughs> just so i know i'm not uh, uh talking to myself yeah all right thanks steve awesome all right so you know the point here is that um and what's really fascinating is i started our business right right <laughs> this is the arrow the magic arrow when julian and i started this tri site and we had to spend, you know, uh, that first uh, term of our school program was very mentally difficult on the students, no doubt about it. Not gonna, not gonna sugarcoat it one bit. Um, so, but the, you know, the similarities are, are very similar. You know, I do see that a lot of people um, are injecting a lot of negativity about Bitcoin, you know, and and blockchain and. I see a lot of infighting and stuff like that. And unfortunately, you know, the sad part about it is until this trend sort of plays itself out and we start moving back up, that's that's going to be a lot of the conversation. It's, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, the good part about this image, you know, as I said, if you're new to investing, is just very much like this image. It's not really anything different here. And, you know, the irony of it all is we could go through the little Silk Road correction. It's basically the same logic is that once you do, and keep in mind, this is a weekly price chart, so this is fairly long term, right? So once you do ultimately get back into these green boxes, if this really is a bull, and if this thing really is for real, now we've seen on a lot of altcoins that no, indeed, their bull markets weren't real and they did break to new lows. But, you know, if Bitcoin is for real, and I often suggest people hunt those weekly W's, right, to tell you that these things are for real, then this green box actually should represent, okay, well, now's actually time when I can start real realistically getting into the story. And, you know, this level here, so this is our 61.8 FIB level. You know, there's a guy that I used to work with. And now this is years ago, which is kind of shocking, but <laughs> uh, time marches on. But anyway, a guy that I used to work with years ago who used to just literally trade this level religiously uh, every single day in the crude oil markets, every single day, whenever 61.8 was hit, you knew this guy was taking a trade. So it, it should just at the very least tell you that the professionals are starting to get interested. Um, and I call him our mountain man level. Um, I really like the 78.6. And I've noticed over the years as I've been sort of teaching my courses and stuff like this, that the 78.6 level seems for one reason or another to be a powerful level that if this level, if this thing really is a bull, 
it will battle violently around this level. And like we saw that in the last cycle, you can see there is 78.6 and you can see ultimately this was the level, right? I mean, Brian and his crazy W's and I remember we had like site members who actually took these trades uh, through this event. And one one site member, a guy, and he, he didn't know how to trade when when I first met him, but the son of a gun bought Bitcoin 20x leverage here and rode the whole goddamn way up. <laughs> he made a lot of money. <laughs> no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So, but the point is, is isn't that interesting how 78.6 is coming? You know, it's been such a monstrously important level. I often, you know, for my altcoin purchases, I love just to buy these levels. And, you know, Brian, little old lady kind of talk. I'm not really in any hurry whatsoever. And one could argue that just being an accumulator through this green box, investors did very, very well. And then if you really want to try and time your purchases, like I said, you know, weekly W's are the poop. What's so sick, guys, is after this weekly W came in here, notice this was this big, I think this was the Silk Road uh, auction, the second Silk Road auction. The market slammed into our buddy and the actual sort of weekly breakout level right there. Look who was sitting there on the buy side. <laughs> it's just evil, right? And look at this level, right, to be a buyer. I mean, oh, geez, it drives you crazy. Anyway, this is the kind of stuff that we teach in our course and on the site and stuff. Um, so the point of the matter here is we'll know that Bitcoin is in the next bull when, you know, the charts start kind of looking like this. And I have even heard some people on uh, Twitter and on public sort of commentary saying, you know, they really don't expect the Bitcoin uh, market to sort of settle into its next bull phase until we actually go through a period where it just kind of goes sideways. And keep in mind that, you know, this from this ultimate dump, which was, you know, the end of the year, uh, and you could argue there's lots of sort of tax loss selling driven sort of reasons and stuff like that, um, to ultimately that Silk Road auction, that was like, I think November of that year, you know, that's, that's the better part of a year where we just sort of consolidated. And I got a funny feeling that this is sort of what we have to go through before the next like, real rip, roar, and bull can start. Um, I've also been hearing, too, a lot lately, a lot of conversations about how the market believes that, you know, 6,000, 7,000 is sort of cost of production. And I wonder whether, you know, back in these days, it would be interesting when we go back and look in the history books, what the average sort of cost of production was. I almost sort of let the market tell me. And what I noticed was when we dipped down into this level here, talk of 51% attack, which means that, you know, basically the, the only people that are left in the business um, are, are sort of, you know, the people that can actually uh, survive mining underwater because their pockets are so deep and they sort of flush out all the, uh, all the, the, the weak hand cost of production people. I wonder if we have to go through that kind of period again to sort of mark the bottom. So I do hear lots of talk, no 6,000, you know, 7,000 is cost of production and, you know, based on electrical, electrical costs and all that. So I wonder to ultimately find a bottom, does the market actually have to trade a little bit below that where some of the bigger players just run at a loss for a little while just to make sure that all the weak little hands uh, get wiped out. Mo's saying on YouTube now, he thinks cost of production is about 47.58. That'd be really interesting, Mo, how you figure that out. But uh, that sort of shit's on everybody's parade now, eh? So <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, Let's, uh, fa you know, enough of the, the old cycle talk. Let's just sort of fast forward to today. You can see here's good old Mountain Man. And here was that uh, that uh, first congressional um, meeting back in March. Or I guess, no, I guess it was February. Jeez, I guess I thought it was March, but February. Uh, we called him the Bitcoin dad, sort of can't, stood in front of Congress and said, ah, you, know, you know, Bitcoin's not so bad. I think it was sort of this uh, the chief of the uh, of the uh, futures exchanges that were listing Bitcoin, um, and of course you know Mountain Man and very actually almost identical to this stab. You see how there were like initial stabs into sixty one point eight here, and those trades actually you saw a counter trend rally right back into seventy eight point six. 
you can see that you know he took a bit of heat, but nonetheless, uh, that mountain man trade did translate into a bit of a rally. Tough trade though. I'm not gonna not gonna sugarcoat that. That's difficult trading. Um, 38.2 seems to have been a bit of a brick wall here in the short term, which I find very interesting. Um, so going forward, uh, you can see we're still playing with this, and you know, kind of like what I said here. We don't really know that the bottom is in until lows are seriously tested. And then we get these kind of W action. And we had on, on Stamp in particular, they had a nice little FU against these lows. Some of the other exchanges didn't have that FU. But nonetheless, you can see this sort of W type action and then our surge back up. So, you know, at best, what we have right now, and it's encouraging, and we had sort of drawn this off of that original uh, congressional meeting uh, dump low. We do have the market, you know, first off, we M'd here, so no sign of a W yet. Those lows didn't hold. We've come down into this tail here, and they often say wicks and tails like to be eaten, so, you know, really that shouldn't be shocking. We put in a really interesting little close, and this is actually sort of when I went away on my trip. I was like, okay, you know, Bitcoin's got a little bit of a head and shoulders working. It looks like, you know, I can sort of, you know, relax a little bit on vacation. <laughs> And literally the day that I left for the vacation, the damn market tops. <laughs> um, so um, what is interesting is we just basically, and, and you know, we can look on the lower time frame. So what was really cool about this was you can see just off this weekly chart that that was a bit of a fractal there. And actually off the dailies, it's a nice little inverted head and shoulders. And in essence, this level uh, tag here was basically that target. So so the trade, quote unquote, you know, did actually play out almost perfect to um, expectation. Uh, markets come screaming back down against these lows again. And now this is interesting because we tried to stop here. I would have really liked to have seen that last week's uh, low, right, was actually lower than the previous weeks, but it wasn't. We made a new low here. So as a result, at the absolute best, I can, uh, you know, if this low was inside this bar, then I could say, hey, oh, maybe we got an inside bar reversal and, you know, this is enough. But because this low is lower than this low, that's still very sort of fractal conversation, which means, ironically enough, this week's high now becomes sort of the pivot way up there. Uh, and there is the fractal, boom, boom, boom. If we put on that, that Williams percentage fractal indicator, it would have like a little, you know, node down here if this fires. So at the very best, and sort of what I'm thinking right now is whatever this counter, this rally, uh, weekly rally peak high was, and then back down to this original low, that's our trading range for the time being on the weekly charts. And also this kind of corresponds to with the dailies because uh, right now we're at a really interesting level where the dailies could give us sort of an institutional bias that the trend has turned up. But, you know, if we move away from this high and we fail off of here, well, you know, then that bias just simply isn't going to turn back up yet. So very interesting levels on the weeklies. I sure would like to see this rally. That's sort of my personal bias. And unfortunately, when personal bias comes in, that often clouds your sort of trading decisions. Um, you know, I, I suppose I could argue to a certain degree I am a crypto bull. And because of the nature of this business, um, you know, our basically our business model follows the Bitcoin chart. <laughs> so you can see business model went a little bit insane and now we're just in okay where is the base of our business <laughs> because unfortunately uh, you know well not fortunately unfortunately but uh, a lot of our audience is uh, crypto and um, uh, oriented so i think that makes sense um so but that's personal bias unfortunately from a trader's perspective personal bias doesn't mean jack shit uh excuse my french youtube sorry let one go there, but it doesn't. And I do see a lot, you know, like on Twitter and stuff like that. Holy moly. Do I ever see a lot of conversation about, I think this is going to happen. I think that's going to happen. And I got to tell you guys, the only thing that really makes money in this market on a consistent basis and being able to come in day in, day out is to articulate your reasons for acting, what we call our setups. 
Um, ideally, you'd like to have three unrelated reasons and then just trading your setups. And a lot of times it means just simply letting go. A lot of times I see setups come in and it's just like, especially if it's first thing in the morning and it's uh, through, you know, in uh, West Coast uh, time zone, uh, when I wake up in the morning at six, seven o'clock, that's sort of the juicy window to take a trade in North America, what we call the New York kill zone. Uh, there's a gentleman on the internet, I think that touts a program. I don't know whether he's still teaching or not, but uh, I think he has a pretty big following. He loves that term kill zone. I got to say, it's uh, it's pretty appropriate. <laughs> I used to, uh, when I was funded as a prop trader, I uh, um, one of the questions uh, that they sort of asked me, because I've been a broker for years and years and years, uh, was, um, uh, you know, did you learn any sort of lessons? And the number one lesson I learned, and you guys all have to see it, and hopefully if I don't talk too much, I'll show you uh, an example of it that happened today, uh, is you never trust the first hour of trading in the North American session. And for me on the West Coast, that's like about six o'clock in the morning till about seven or eight o'clock in the morning which really sucks because that's exactly when I wake up and usually that's when the market reverses and we'll see that the market did that today. <laughs> Drive you crazy. Arr. Anyway, so the point of the matter is is uh, we trade our setups and we let our setups speak. Uh, opinions, eh, what can you do? Like I said, uh, I'm biased because I am long crypto. I like crypto and that was, you know, I built the little old lady portfolio to be long crypto. Uh, and nobody loves a bear market, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'd love to see this thing W out here. You can see the potential W. Uh, and if it does and we can close and really on a weekly basis, it's pretty simple. We close above 82.16.75. You want to write that down. That's off of the weekly stamp levels. I, I can become a rip or arm bull again. Woohoo! uh but that's an awfully big if and right now at best we have a cute little fractal off the weeklies trying to form which if this does fire then that's probably going to take us up into reload zones which we'll see on the lower time frame charts um uh and maybe new potential shorts against these highs so that's sort of the bigger picture and you know as i've i've said repeatedly guys i really do think i mean i guess a couple of things i should point out before we leave this chart first off you know this was just basically about a year ago right now it's about 11 months where goldman sachs came out and publicly made the call that they like three thousand dollars as the bottom on bitcoin and the bitcoin market reversed violently off of that call and basically didn't look back so, you know, we do have to understand that, you know, for a lot of sort of Goldman Sachs clients, they really don't want to see price go below this level because that's where Goldman Sachs told them to buy. So that's, you know, and look at this juicy tail here, you know, and, you know, horizontal support and resistance. We can start plunking levels in here, you know, that high right there, this horizontal support and resistance, that tail right there. Now we're starting to get like actually like a, an area that the smart money is going to want to defend. And especially railroad tracks. Man, we had an incredible example just this week of uh, price action coming into railroad track lows and the market just saying, no, nah, I don't think so. Get your ass out of there. And sure enough, it did. So, you know, railroad track levels are, are the poop, in my opinion. And if we look at horizontal support and resistance, there isn't a heck of a lot. I think it's this railroad track reversal right here that's actually put the bottom in for this entire market. So if we start dipping below that and lose that level, well, yeah, I think our next stop has to be down into this area. And maybe that's what has to happen into the end of the year. Very much like I just said, you know, the fourth quarter, right? Here's, uh, here's July. We had a really nasty double top failure here um, in 2014. So, you know, and I remember we had just a, an incredible harmonic uh, short setup right there. Um, but the point of the matter here is, th you know, this is how Bitcoin does often act into the end of the year um when it's in a bear so you know we should be, acknowledge that that's a very realistic possibility uh and really i think you know your key is do we lose these lows right as simple as that and so you know the irony of it all is that you know uh, geez probably i guess now about three or four months ago i did one of these free youtube videos where i just painted this as the top end of the range this is our bottom end of the range 
And gee whiz, that's basically been, you know, we're just bumping along the bottom end of the range here, just asking, can we accept higher? Um, and, you know, the interesting thing, too, you know, I don't have enough anecdotal evidence off the lower time frames to get bullish just yet. But I can completely understand the professional trader is going to take this shot. That is a risk worth taking. And just simply say, if we fail through here, I'll walk away. That's that's not a bad risk window at all. So I can completely understand the pros coming in here and buying against this level. Totally makes sense to me. Um, so I think on balance off the higher time frames, uh, if especially if you're an investor, just Joe Sixpack, I come to the I'm come to this Bitcoin. What is this crazy thing? Bitcoin. Never go and shoot your wad all in one go, right? That would just that's common sense. Um, I like the idea of just staggering. Maybe even just you know Joe Sixpack. Now that we're back into green boxes, maybe just go and buy like you know. Let's say Brian, I wanted to buy X amount of dollars of Bitcoin. Well, why not take that and break it into like tenths? And once every month, or maybe even once every couple months, you just, whatever the price is, now that we're in green boxes, you just go and buy a little bit. And if it, and the cool part about it, if you do it that way, is that you actually end up uh, cheering for lower prices, because that means that your purchase the next month is going to be even cheaper and even cheaper. And what should happen, of course, is as you do this over time, you get an average cost for your holding basis. Now, maybe this is the bottom and we start heading up. Well, same thing. You get an average uh, average in price. Probably what's most likely is it does something like this. And again, you're averaging your way in over time. So you end up just getting an average price right in the green box. And for Joe Sixpack, I really think that that's a, that's a very simple, sound approach to getting involved in the Bitcoin story. Now, there are, of course, like we said, our speculators out there and those people that want to trade for profit and all that. Um, and, you know, when I look at the broader crypto market, what I really want to see is I want to start seeing W's. And we're close, but close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, as they say. You know, uh, this is just, I like to have a screen of just a whole bunch of the coins in U.S. dollars to see, you know, what they look like in U.S. dollars. Uh, and the Tether instrument seems to be good. You know, Trex is adding more of the U.S. dollar uh, denominated. So they're actually, like, you know, liquid markets in U.S. dollars. So I think you're probably going to we'll slowly transition out of using Tether. Uh, to using Trex, uh, excuse me, to using like US dollar specific. But nonetheless, the, the message is pretty simple. Um, you know, I did like the sort of WE action in Bitcoin, and I think it put in a hell of a battle here at this railroad tracks level that uh, I t even tweeted. I said, if we lose these levels, I'm done. Uh, and you can see the market held those levels and worked its way up into this uh, wick here. But I don't know. I mean, you look at this, is this, you know, I, and I often ask people, I say, you know, if you were in uh, grade three English and your teacher asked you to uh, go and draw a W on the chalkboard, well, you know, this is not bad right in there. You know, that's not bad right in there. But what I really want to see for me to like believe that this is, you know, solid uh, W is more kind of actually like this, right? See how that's well defined? Maybe give me a nice stab down into here and then turn up. But, you know, I'm on balance, like I said, from the trader's perspective, I completely make sense that traders are taking their long shots uh, against these lows that we just talked about a few minutes ago off the weeklies. Totally makes sense to me. Um, and interesting, too, we talked about railroad track lows. Look how powerful that low was right in there on this tether. Right? Man, I, I'm, I am so warming to these candle body lows as... Uh, trade location these days. Oh man, I just, I love it so much. Uh, okay, so the message I was trying to convey here just a moment ago is, you know, when I look at, you know, the altcoin space, do I see Ws? Uh, nope. Not yet, you know, up through here, up through here, up through here, up through here, up through here. You can see them. The whole market is like so close. It could W, these all could W, but they haven't quite W'd yet. And unfortunately, you know, 
you know, a lot of these lows were just spikes. You can even see like on NEO, we left a little price gap down at this level. You know, gaps like to be filled. Same thing here. Uh, we might even just start aiming out on some of these. I think there's one or two of these that are threatening to M. Uh, this one's got a lower close, but you know, do we see the W's in Bitcoin cash is looking a little dangerous here. Um, I just don't see the liquid. We're so close. I've even put on trade metrics saying, okay, well, if we can W, should we take a shot against the W? So uh, I want to be a bull. I want to say, yep, go and buy it. You'll make lots of money. Oh, I think we really want to keep an eye on this guy. Looks like he's trying to perk up here. You can see the potential W's trying to come in, you know, um, but we're just not quite there yet. Um, well, we don't need to talk about that today. It's interesting, the spreads, I've been watching the spreads on OKCoin. Uh, there is Contango, right? And our simple premise is when the market is below zero, which is basically that level right there, uh, it means we're in an unhappy market. And unfortunately, you can see we've been in an unhappy market for a while. Market uh, tried to recapture uh, Contango there. So we would call this backwardized right now. Um, and you can see the fight here, really trying to recapture that zero line. The market's trying to get happier. Uh, but it isn't just quite there yet. I mean, it's like we're close, but uh, not quite. Um, one measure I like to use, um, <coughs> again, you remember I had made reference earlier, I had said that um, um, off the weekly charts, we potentially have this fractal, but it means we have to recapture this high now, which is pretty far away. That would make a pretty big fractal, so I don't know. I think if anything, we got to come back down and test these lows, but that's just bias. Uh, but I had said that uh, there was a lower time frame tool that I like to use to try and help me see trend. Uh, we call it the institutional bias. It's just the relationship of two different exponential moving averages. And as you can see, basically captured the bull and then on the double top fail. Came in a little bit late on this signal, but nonetheless, you can see the double top, right? That's when I went on vacation and then, yeah. Uh, and that relationship has been negative for a while now. I'm kind of hoping, of course, that we can uh, get that relationship back on the bull side. It would make me feel a lot better. Um, and if anything, you know, what we're seeing here off of this range was we did nothing more than just what we call a uh, first stop target uh, bounce, 38.2 tag there. And it's interesting how that MEX event actually was the sort of catalyst that caused that 38.2 tag. Um, I did like the idea, and uh, I think we can probably see it on other charts, so I'll show you that in a bit. But nonetheless, um, I just wanted to make reference to this institutional bias here, right here. And you can also see into this wick, wicks and tails like to be eaten. There's these guys up here that would love to be released before we leave this chart. Um, you know, they just could rally it up into here and then failed. So you can see wicks and tails like to be eaten. You can see we came up into the top of that wick up there. And now we're kind of floundering here, right? And I thought it was interesting, the overnight lows. You can see, and we'll look at that chart in a bit, but if we lose those overnight lows, you can see this is a daily chart. If we now lose those lows into sort of the Monday session, right, you can see the daily fractal failure that we'll produce here. And that will force these moving averages to head back down. So really powerful uh, check of the moving averages here that we just saw overnight. Fascinating uh, tag and reversal. And now the market's just asking, okay, well, do we really want to fail here? And when we look at the lower time frames, it'll make sense why the market stalled where it did uh, into this level. Uh, so with that said, let's maybe head down to, uh, well, this is probably a half decent one here. All right, so uh, we had, uh, and actually, it's interesting because Phoenix here hasn't completed this AB equals CD, but on a lot of the other ones, uh, like OKCoin, for example, I think it did complete its AB equals CD. Yeah, you can see here's OKCoin, uh, and I was going to show you on that other chart, but I didn't. But anyway, if we did an AB 
And there's those railroad track low CD. It was interesting how basically, again, that mix event, not only did it hit 38.2 levels, so, you know, first stop, Raber Shed, we should expect some sort of resistance up there anyway. Uh, but it also actually completed a harmonic move off of a lot of these exchanges. Um, so that was uh, that was the daily OK coin chart. I think I have it on here as well, just off the lower time frame. Yeah, there it is off of the hourly. So I thought that was fascinating, right? Where you know a lot of people say well that mix event was completely unrelated and all that kind of stuff but the irony of it all is actually i think that this had to happen and there were probably guys who were watching these levels and said okay as soon as it gets up into this a b equals c d target hit the hit it hard <laughs> and they did <laughs> boom so fascinating and then uh you know i was tweeting this out it was incredible to watch the price drop through here and you can see this like key low here on OKCoin. OK if we look on something like, I think it was Max, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, where is it? No. No, well, maybe I did it off the Phoenix chart. Yeah, just bear with me for a second, guys. Uh, doo, 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 doo. Yeah, here it is. And I tweeted out, if we lose, this is uh, those railroad track daily lows. Right? Remember, the market opened up, went up, came back down, closed hard, you know, that daily level. And actually, even I think I uh, tweeted out the chart, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but I don't know whether I have it handy here or not. I might. Uh, yeah, here it is. I had said that if the market breaks these railroad track lows, look out. And the market came, you know, the market came screaming down into this level. The SEC news came out, um, and <laughs> the whole market just stopped. It was absolutely incredible to watch. Um, so on OKCoin, OK you know, that was basically this event, um, and it was just incredible to watch. And you know, I like I said, Mr. Bear, who we're gonna try and do more public shows because you you guys all really have to get to know him. He should be like a crypto all star. <laughs> In fact, he is, but uh, he hasn't been let out of the box yet. <laughs> when you guys get a hold of him on YouTube, uh, we're gonna make him famous. Anyway, um, he was in here uh, on the buy side. What a surprise! And we were sort of chattering away uh, on the site uh, about, you know, um, would these railroad tracks lows hold? And what was fascinating, like I said, it was on the SEC event, and the market just sort of stopped on a dime. It was absolutely remarkable. Um, and then, of course, that started this rally here. Um, so uh, here we are now, and I think what happened um, probably the best is to show you off of something like this chart is <coughs> the railroad tracks lows held. Uh, there was like a total uh, disconnect between um, activity in the market on the SEC news event and through here. This was very, very active. And then the SEC news event happened and it created one of these nutso insane dojis again. Um, and, you know, the irony of it all is that that's basically exactly what happened uh, back um, in the uh, spring. Let's see if I can find that chart for you. Actually, it might have been this one. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, no, not that one. One of these charts. I always talk way too much, but I'm having fun. I hope you guys indulge me. No, not that one. Okay, you're around here somewhere. I know you are. Uh, I think it was this one. Uh, boom. Yeah. So uh, this was the SEC decision event uh, back in March. And gee whiz, look at that. I mean, the low of this candle here is 958. The high of this candle is $1,300. Like, you guys got to understand, this Bitcoin price has come an awful long way in a short period of time. But anyway, interesting how we get this insane doji action all around that SEC nonsense, eh? 
So, uh, you know, on the daily charts, I think it did actually produce a pin bar and somebody in our lounge was talking about that. Um, and that was basically this candle here. Um, but even off the lower time frames, right off of like that hourly chart, uh, even the event there, uh, put in that crazy, um, crazy doji action. So long and short of it here is, uh, the candle body lows held. And I was shocked to just see the selling and activity on the DOM. It just disappeared as we came into those levels. Uh, the market wants to do business, couldn't find any business to be done here, and jackknife the other direction. So if we do a fib off of these lows back up against the highs, and here's our good old reload zone, I don't think it should surprise anybody what's happened here, right? L long and short of it here, the market rallied up into resistance. Um, you know, I, again, I'm absolutely loving these candle body uh, peaks as trade levels. Couldn't get up into that area, but it did tag 78.6. And then you notice that we spent the entire day yesterday, and it was so cool because um, I found, um, and I won't show them their charts, you know, copyright, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but do yourself a favor on Twitter. I tweeted out um, this company. I'm really impressed with their product. Um, these guys. I was really, really impressed uh, with these guys, tensorcharts.com and their order book uh, information. Really, really great information. And somebody in the, set, in the lounge this morning, we were all chatting about this on the site yesterday. And this is the kind of stuff that we do on, on, um, on TRI is we just talk in the lounge. We're constantly exchanging ideas and stuff. Uh, and I am, you know, just for the record, for YouTubers all watching us, I don't have a bias in trading. I couldn't give a rat's ass. All I care is I want to know what works. <laughs> and I want to do more of what works and less of what doesn't. And I was very impressed with these guys' uh, charts, this uh, counters uh, indicator, sort of telling you when the uh, retail public was uh, puking. It was a very, very cool tool. Um so do yourself a favor and go check them out. I have, you know, um, open uh, comment, whatever you want to call it. I'm, uh, but um, highly impressed with that tool. And so actually I, ran, I rec uh, was doing a, uh, a DOM study uh, through the day yesterday and just uh, doing day trades uh, back and forth through this trading range. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, in a reload zone short, uh, market puked and puked hard on the eventual fail of these trend lines. Not really a big surprise considering location. And what I was really surprised about this morning, and it kind of bummed me out because like I said, it usually happens right when I wake up in the morning uh, and I hate it and it's driving me nuts. But um, this is a short term chart of that Phoenix, those levels. Um, and right into a very predictable uh, time of day, uh, you can see this is 6.55, 7 o'clock. Um, you know, my old prop firm when they interviewed me, I don't know whether I said it or not, but uh, we used to always say you never trust the first hour of trading. Just don't do it. You're going to get yourself head handed to you. And like I said, there's a guy on <laughs> on Twitter, I think. Uh, well, Twitter, YouTube, the, you know, social media, whatever you want to call it. Uh, who likes to call these, you know, these time zones, kill zones. And actually I got... Uh, if you uh, Google on, um, well, not Google, if you use TradingView and you go into indicators, a whole bunch of people have written scripts uh, on this tool, kill zones, Bitcoin kill zones. Uh, Oscar wrote a, a script or two. Yeah, there's Oscar, old longtime site uh, member. Uh, ICT, I think that's the uh, the internet guy. Um that, uh, you know, he sort of, you know, phrased this uh, kill zone. So I think, it would, you know, it's pretty apt, accurate. Anyway, the point of the matter here is through that time of day, uh, that's often when reversals happen. So if you fancy yourself a day trader, uh, this is definitely an area that you have to pay attention to. Uh, we had um, 78.6 FIB level off of this entire range. This happens to be on Phoenix. Uh, and what was really cool is to watch, you know, like I said, on the tensor chart, guys literally watching retail public uh, panic buying through this window here as a great sort of contrarian indicator that I probably think uh, shorts. So 
uh, even in their sort of videos, if you do decide to use those tensor guys, um, they say don't use the indicator on its own. But what I noticed was when we come into key levels, it's a sort of a visual cue that the public is doing the exact wrong thing. <laughs> it's so cool. So do yourself a favor and go check out their charts. Um, you know, as it is now, you can see in this market, they didn't even, and I was hunting all through the morning, um, you know, looking, you know, can I get in on a reload short kind of tag idea? They didn't even give me the opportunity. And I actually kind of think that they've kind of head and shoulders. You can see sort of the fractally nature of this price action in here. And then the counter trend rally and failure right at that sort of neckline right in there. I'm kind of thinking head and shoulders, but AB equals CD should take us down into this uh, profit objective. Oh, actually, isn't that interesting? So this trade, two to one, if you had just taken, this is a classic range trader's life. You can see they're actually done for the day. So uh, way to go, range traders. Uh, I knocked the cover off the ball. It looks to me, and you know, there's good old Mountain. You, know, you could argue he's sitting here just as he was here, right? He probably took a, a short right off of that level and probably took some profits through that dump. Um, but you can see Mountain's probably going to have some sort of play in the market here. And I think, you know, AB equals CD, I think we can make the harmonic argument for this purple level as well. Uh, if we have to go and, and outright head and shoulders uh, target ourselves here, then we're probably thinking down into that area. So if we were uh, head and shut, and then of course candle body lows, <laughs> there's an interesting trade level. Keep your eyes peeled and there's 78.6. So kind of a fun assignment for everybody who's watching this. Let's watch for anecdotal evidence on the tensor charts if we get down into that area of that sort of public puking. Does that make sense? What do you think, guys, in the lounge? Do you think you could do that? Any of you? Are you here? Does anybody? Wait, wait, wait. What is it? What was it? I thought I was going half asleep. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> All right. Well, I guess uh, the lounge isn't participating today. Hey, there we go. I'm kind of on vacation now. <laughs> well, it's good to know that even on vacation, no one of our users likes to participate. Way to go. Okay, so uh, let's. Uh, I if I, I'm going to be heading off to be with my son this afternoon. Sundays are his afternoon day, so I'll come back and I'll see what happens through the later afternoon. But I'd be very curious, you know, for those people that are interested in day trading. Let's keep an eye on price action through here. If you get like signs of divergence in your momentum indicators, if you get nice structure, if you get like the tensor kind of uh, data that's telling you that the retail's puking right through here. Right? let's keep an eye on that and maybe i'll even uh, post that on youtube going forward who knows um now this is a five minute chart so very short term trading reference no doubt about it um there is those moving averages the institutional moving averages we'd love to see them tick back up uh and you can see that on the daily charts there is sort of the top end of our range that's basically a breaking of these highs up here this big old m and the reload zone if that's broken then i think we can work our way higher uh you can see even now we've got a whole bunch of trap bears in here that was through this dump here um and if anything if the market can get back down into these levels we'll watch how they act but if we can finish out the day just even like this, then we have a very clear signal that if we lose this level in the days ahead, then uh, that's going to be a loss of this trend line and a move back below these moving averages. So this is going to be a really interesting afternoon, right? Um, can these lows hold in here? If they do, then uh, basically we're going to have a trading range established. Probably off of that high notice here on this Phoenix chart. That breakout high corresponds with that low here. So there's probably sort of your line in the sand. And you can see that would just be yet another market structure failure level. Uh, I suppose one could argue um, that just gave the shorts another opportunity to sneak in at an appropriate level. There to there. And that was through that New York kill zone this morning, which drove me crazy. 
right? Yep, six, seven o'clock, right? Right through there. So I can understand guys taking shorts off the top end of the range here. Totally makes sense to me. Um, I kind of, you know, on a higher time frame, you know, um, I don't really want to see that fractal fire. If anything, I'd almost prefer that the daily candle get this over with and, and this daily candles low ultimately paints down into here, but then they come back and, and recapture the trend line by the end of the day. If this does fractal out and tomorrow, Monday, we lose these lows, then I think uh, we're going to take a serious stab against all these tails in here. So we've given you, you know, you day traders off the five-minute chart, we've given you some levels to consider. Watch the pukinators and watch your internal um, momentum indicators. I think that makes sense. You know, this is Phoenix, mm -hmm. so let's say 65 yeah, I'll probably go down as low as 65.85 to about 66.20.25. So it's right, you know, right around uh, that BFRN of 6600. I think that makes sense. Um, and you know, the swing traders. I actually kind of like the idea of shorts against all these highs here. Uh, looking for a stab into 64, 60, yeah, about 6400 um and basically risking against this m top uh and then sort of the position traders i'm thinking we gotta we're still we the bull still hasn't sh come back it's close it wants to turn here as soon as this does turn then i can start hunting those longer term setups um if anything probably you know your trade is that day that i sort of tweeted uh, about the move against the candle body lows, considering that tail there. My hunch is what probably happens for the higher time frame players is if we can break out and the moving averages start going bull, uh, then we can start drawing reload zones. And yeah, that's sort of what I thought. Where, you know, wherever this thing ultimately peaks out, notice that the reload zone just so happens to be right into that tail and those candle body lows again. And if we lose those levels, then you can see, whoo boy, we got this big old tail down into here. So I kind of like, you know, let this thing break out, let the moving averages turn positive, then on stabs back into sort of, and it's a, this is cool too, because you can see the bottom of value right in here, reload zone, that in my opinion would be, you know, a higher time frame uh, risk entry window. Okay, I think that's about it. I think the only thing I would uh, also sort of add to this equation is uh, keep your eyes out for those people that are trading the altcoins. Um, this, you know, I have often seen in previous years, the very end of August and the first week or two of September are like sort of your rally window. I've seen this happen repeatedly. And those people that are trading setups, I mean, you can see this. This is... Uh, R-I-P-I-O Credit Network, R-C-N. I have no idea who these guys are. I'm not touting them. I'm not promoting the coin. No idea. What I do see is the market came down into a reload zone, put in a nice W, and is enjoying a nice rally here. Um, I think it's probably a little bit early for us to say that the trend is uh, turning up in earnest. Um, but, you know, Brian and his Ws, I mean, this is what I want to see. These things are completely washed out. You can see Willie, nice and stupid. 50% uh, level just of this range alone. I mean, you can see the W that's trying to form here. Um, where are we here? That's 328, so now we can get like a 5X, and all it does is take us back up to uh, top of value. So, you know, this is sort of, you know, one reason why I like the little old lady, keep the bets really, really small, you know, throw like one, two, you know, especially in a bear market, no more than that, add an idea. You can always add to the trade as we go along. Um, but, you know, there are opportunities out here. And what I like to do on a daily basis is just simply load my Trex list du jour. Uh, and just go through the symbols hunting for the W's. And now I think actually we're getting opportunities where now the W's are coming in below value, which uh, in my opinion is is happy hunting. Look at this guy. You know, just even off of this range here, you can see where the top of value is. Maybe the rally just mm -hmm. looks like this where it lasts like, you know, a month and then pff, back in the shitter. Can we try and get doubles out of this and get yourself a free position, 46 uh, ticks, 
is your high. Can I see 80, 90 ticks? There's 95 right into there. That's not even a tag of this old low. So, you know, I am in shopping. Um, in fact, I think one of the ones that I'm bidding on right now is uh, this CRB. Yeah, I'm willing to take a shot. I mean, look at this OBV. Somebody is coming in and putting money to work here. So, you know, maybe it looks like this. Tough to say. Uh, but I'm willing to take nibbles in here. And uh, I am noticing that names are popping. Uh, and also, too, you know, for those people that are trading things like bots, uh, somebody was in the lounge, I think, posting about, uh, I think it was this one this morning. <coughs> I don't know whether it's still working or not. Whoop, that's uh, maybe I have to go down here. Yeah, there it is. So, you know, setups are setting up. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say that, uh, you know, this is easy. Uh, but I was darn impressed with site members who were like, you know, well, I'm willing to step in at uh, 578 here off of this uh, inverted head and shoulders and basically risk to a break of the, the 504 low. Right now that I've said that, the guys that are running this thing, they're just going to crank it down there and break that bottom. So sorry. <laughs> I doubt it, but who knows? The only time will to hell. But I was just darn impressed to see that people are trading setups and you know they do come and i was kind of um we've got one site member and actually he was in the uh, youtube audience there a few minutes ago mr mo um who basically said uh you know he retweeted one of my tweets i just put a comment i said quite often good trade good investment ideas they're not sort of following the popular crowd and I can tell you, there's not that many people who are really interested in shit coins right now, but there are a few guys on the site that are just, you know, hunting away. And I, I even just saw a day or two ago, I can't remember, one guy posted he got like three or four doubles off the other day. So that's the hallmark of a real pro trader is they just keep coming to work. They're workmen day in, day out, just, you know, rinse and repeat. Uh if you can make money on the long side of the market in this kind of market, oh my goodness. When we go back into stupid mode, then the money just gets ridiculous. For most of us, myself included, <laughs> my advice actually right now is just don't blow yourself up, right? Just if you want to practice taking setups off of lower time frames, off of you know leveraged accounts, and you know, I think that's a great idea to have lots of fun with just the simple idea that you want to increase your Bitcoin holdings. Um, and, you know, if you want to monetize those gains, great. I know there's lots of guys on the site trading, like on um, uh, Max, there's a whole bunch of different altcoins that you can trade setups off of. Um, I know Thomas is on OKCoin trading uh, Ethereum and Litecoin and, and uh, Bitcoin and stuff all day long. So come into the site, and like I said, we'll uh, we'll have Thomas on these free YouTube videos a little bit more going forward. Um, but um, uh, make no mistake about it, you know our traders are just trading away. Um, as I sort of said earlier, I have a bit of a long bias, and ever and people who've known me for a long time know that Brian likes to be long. I, I it it's painful for me to be short, but I do take short setups if they come along. Uh, and I do have demonstration accounts. Uh, I just don't like the idea of taking short setups right here. So I haven't really been talking too much about it. And like I showed you off of sort of that daily chart, uh, just literally the day I left on vacation. I mean, that's the that's the piss off about all this. The go the market goes and just like tops out, just a, you know, a really uh, textbook double top fail. <laughs> and so I come back to this mess. Um, so for a guy like me, it's actually been a, an exercise in just being patient, being disciplined. You can see where my short of shorting mm -hmm. window is if I want to think short. Um, and I just have to wait for this to resolve itself out. Uh, hopefully, like I said, we can start getting bullish institutional biases, et cetera. And I can actually go back to hunting long setups. But for now, I just got to do a hurry up and do nothing. Anyway, so the point here is that uh, the boys on the site are taking setups uh, lots uh, through the day, and, and uh, I'm so proud of them. Everybody's doing a great job on the site. 
For investors, I think the most important thing for you to do right now is to just hurry up and go slowly. Until the weekly W's come back, there is no massive hurry here to get into crypto. Just go slowly. If you want to try and take the timing out of the equation, and this is why I love this reload zone concept, once we get down into these green boxes, if this thing still is a bull, then this is where you just put yourself on a, just a nice slow accumulation strategy. And you're just going to keep buying, but in very small amounts over time. And like I said, for those people, actually, they're rooting for the price to go down. <laughs> um, and that's sort of what I see in the market right now. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes we have to go through these washout periods like 2013, 2014, right? Uh, am I going anywhere? I've been at this game for 30 years, right? There's probably going to be, I uh, keep my fingers crossed. Hopefully I got another 30 years ahead of me in this. So I'm not really in any hurry. Um, and I don't think anybody out there in the public should be either. I really don't think so. Um, I feel kind of badly that, you know, major media outlets. Hey, Jamie. Nice to see you, bud. Uh, major media outlets are just getting wrecked through this market. And I'm not quite sure why they keep putting themselves out in there, but to a certain degree for us, you know, people that really like crypto and are really in this for the reasons, cause we, you know, believe in the technology, et cetera. We're not in the, um, in the, you know, just, Hey, I, I came here to get rich camp, right? Where's my hundred X? Where's my moon? I know there are a lot of people in this space that are like that. And I think those people, you're going to have to just cool your jets for a little while. Um, and really, you know, until we start seeing the weekly W's come back, that's got to be the message. Just go slowly. If you want to get in, great. Dollar cost averaging. Love it. Beautiful. You know, now, if anything, you know, when we do look at these altcoin names, we really have to concentrate on fundamentals. You know, what is value in your coin's name? If you're going to be trading setups like this, gentlemen, well, I'm not too concerned because if we lose these lows, he's gone. Get out of there. But if you're doing things like, you know, like little old lady just buying against lows and, you know, going to hold on for doubles, well, it would really help if you had some sort of fundamental value. A metric that you could put into this. From what I understand, the public sentiment is that we are at cost of production. I don't know. Mr. Mo here on Bitcoin said that maybe cost of production could be down in the 4,000s. Any way you shake it, that's green boxes, right? And that's sort of fundamentals. Um, so I think, you know, uh, until we go back into higher highs and higher lows on the weekly basis and you know, this is, uh, you know, no brainer, just, you know, do a RLZ bids against moving averages and you make money from this stuff. Until we get back into that kind of environment, I think, you know, fundamentals, your fundamental reason for being involved in any of these coins is hugely important. Uh, Jamie says, Google Trends is a great fundamental tool to use and I'm almost as scared. Is there any double using Google Trends, Jamie? <laughs> Maybe why don't we let you do a, a video on that and I'll post that on the site, all right? <laughs> Is that a deal? Jamie's fundamental corner with the queen. <laughs> no, I'm having fun with you. Sorry. She doesn't appreciate that. <laughs> okay, guys, I think I've done my rant for the day. Uh, hopefully I've given you everybody a nice sort of sober look at the market. Um, build your trading plans, everybody, please. <laughs> um that's the whole purpose of why we sort of uh built the level one course and we and you know what's really cool is we even had one gentleman who uh while he was taking the course um got emotionally destroyed through this event here and i really was worried about him but from what I understand, he really learned and from this experience. And then through this, he went and made just ridiculous amounts of money. So he use him as a lesson. And uh you know, Mr. Uh, RJ, 
if you do watch this or if any of your uh, group watches this video and um, um, I don't know whether he's an alumni of the entire program or not, but I know he did uh, at least the level one with us. And he's actually referred other people to our program to help them. So uh, that must mean that he that he thinks highly of the information. Uh, but do what he does. And if you are watching this later on, Mr. RJ, uh, you know, let me know whether I can publicly use you as an example because I think you're an awesome example uh, for all the sort of new people. Because there's, a, I'm sure there's a lot of new people that are going through an emotional hell right now. And the, the cool part about it is that, you know, he learned from all of the sort of mistakes that he was making through this. And like I said, on the next cycle, he did very, very, very well. So um, I would use this time. Don't let this time slip by. This time is an awesome time to practice. Practice really getting to know what, you know, location looks like. Practice getting to know what divergence looks like. Practice to getting to know what market structure looks like and, you know, the times of day that you should operate. And that's er everything that we do in the level one course, right? And we got a new level one course starting up here in the fall. Um, and, you know, we have quite a few people that are uh, enrolled. So I'm actually pleased to see that there's quite a bit of an inertia here. Uh, but the point of the matter is, is that uh, take this time and to, to learn from this because this is this is incredibly valuable market information um and and uh, a time to really brush up on how to run a small business of trading to success um so if you're interested in that you know reach out to us we'll be more than happy to talk to you if you're interested so uh level two and level three years uh, they're all gung-ho and we had a huge school come out of level uh one uh, uh, class, so I, I'm going to be extremely busy this fall with the level two and level three years. I think uh, Grim the Wookie and just an insane bot trader uh, is going to be uh, the instructor for the level one this term. So super stoked uh, about that. Um, I'm not really in a big hurry to go and throw a bunch of the money that I made uh, on the bull uh, at the market just yet. I am sitting in a very heavy cash position, more than 50 percent um, in the crypto portfolio. Just full disclosure, the banging out doubles portfolio. And I'm in no hurry to spend money. I've been nibbling away, like I said. Uh, one idea that came up to me um, that I'm interested in is uh, bidding uh, on this uh, CRB credit bit, right? Um, and this is the kind of information that I put out on the site on a daily basis. But I'm not going full bore into crypto just yet. Uh, as I said, I'm waiting for the Ws to come back before I start really uh, pouring money back into the space. Uh, okay, so Jamie did actually upload his Google Trends. And if anything, um, how can I do this? This probably is a perfect image uh, to end the uh, broadcast at. But I'm not quite sure how to do this if I go like that. There we go. Uh, oh, no, it didn't work. Oh, it downloaded this silly picture. All right, well, let's see. How do we do this? Uh, open. There we go. So uh, it seems to me... As soon as we start seeing W breakouts here, you can see the market comes up off of these lows and then it's all like, okay, where are we? And then uh, Peter's out. And then same thing. We got these highs and okay, here we go. And then Peter's out. <laughs> so as soon as that uh, actually bottoms uh, and starts uh, Wing in earnest, then we'll know that uh, the bull is back. Take this time now. Learn how to trade off a trading plan. Learn about risk management. Learn about managing your emotions. Learn about trading setups. And you'll do well at this. And you'll have this skill for the rest of your life. Um, that's everything that I did uh, through this period here. And I got to tell you, we made a lot of people very, very, very happy. They took the time and effort and, and went through that process. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it at that for today. I hope everybody enjoyed the offering. Um, have yourselves a great day. Uh, great chatting uh, with a lot. I see a lot of our veterans um, on the uh, on the YouTube chat. So great to see all you guys uh, over there. Um, great to have everybody in the lounge here today. Uh, thanks for the feedback. Um, stay positive. Uh, play from a position of strength. Right? Don't bite off more than you can chew. All these sage words of wisdom. 
Go slowly. Don't take any wooden nickels. <laughs> now I'm starting to sound like granddad. All right, I'm out of here. All the best, everybody. Bye for now.